Good afternoon, I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive, and uh, I'm here with uh, some of the leaders of the Westchester County Department of Public Safety, including our Chief John Hodges, with our District Attorney, um, uh, Anthony Scarpino, also with uh, Tejesh Sangela, who is the head of our uh, Human Rights uh, Commission. And uh, before we talk about our update for the COVID outbreak, which is usually what we're doing on these updates, we're going to uh, invite the district attorney and then our police professionals to talk about of, of an incident that occurred and for which we're very proud of our uh, prosecutorial and our uh, police enforcement efforts. So the district attorney, Anthony Scarpino. Thank you, County Executive Latimer. Um, it's, um, we've had a, an unfortunate incident in, uh, here in, in the Bronxville, Yonkers, Mount Vernon corridor in an area that uh, both uh, County Executive Latimer and I know very well, Scouts Field area, uh, us both growing up in Mount Vernon, spent time probably playing, playing ball and other things there. And uh, we, uh, the police have announced the arrest, and I am announcing, of course, the uh, arraignment of two individuals, Nodar Kig, uh, Kigvadzid and Joseph Haslett. Both of them are 23 years old uh, for hate crime acts, uh, two felonies and one misdemeanor involving the spray painting of uh, SWAT stickers and uh, anti-Semitic and anti-Mexican and anti-every group you could think of uh, types of spray paint on the community walls down there and uh, on the uh, areas where uh, people play baseball. And it's, uh, it, it, you know, we have to always reiterate that there's no place in Westchester for this. These crimes are repugnant and uh, there's no place in, in for us to tolerate this. And so um, I want to commend the, um, the county police and the Bronxville police uh, for their quick action in making these arrests. Uh, the two individuals were arraigned around one o'clock today. They are charged with, uh, the first count is criminal mischief in the third degree is a hate crime, which is a class D felony. Uh, aggravated uh, harassment in the first degree, a class E felony, and the uh, misdemeanor um, of... Um, this is the charge, please! And a misdemeanor charge dealing with the graffiti. Um, they were arraigned. Uh, these are uh, offenses that uh, do not allow the setting of bail. They have been released on their own recognizance by the judge. Uh, District Attorney's Office could not ask for any bail in regards to it. And the cases have been adjourned. Um, they've been adjourned to July 15th, 2020. At this time, they will probably appear in the uh, Bronxville Village Court. Um, this uh, the very, ap very rapid um, work done by the police departments in identifying the individuals, as well as Fortunately, one of the individuals decided to leave his wallet at the scene, which was a clue for us. And uh, I'd let, like to let the, um, our chief that's here from the county police talk a little bit about the investigative work that was done. Uh, but we are going to prosecute this to the fullest extent of the law uh, because we just, at a time like this with COVID, we all have to work together and be together and divisive actions like this work against all of us. So with that, I'd like to uh, turn it over to Chief Hodges. Chief. Thank you, uh, District Attorney, and thank you, County Executive. Um, so, uh, as was mentioned uh, regarding this incident on, um, on Monday, May 25th, uh, a, a woman reported that uh, there was graffiti in the area of Scout Field. Um, and the graffiti was of uh, a nature that it was anti-Semitic and, and racist in nature. Uh, this particular area is, uh, uh, although it's a county park, it's a confluence of uh, parts of the city of Yonkers, it's part of Bronxville, it's part of Mount Vernon. So after uh, uh, some discussion, um, county police detectives uh, did launch an investigation. They were assisted by the Bronxville uh, Police Department. Uh, there was video 
as well as uh, evidence that was left at the scene, as the uh, as the district attorney had mentioned, um, and that led to the arrest yesterday of the two individuals, Nodar uh, Kikvasais and uh, Thomas Hazelt. Um, and uh, as the district attorney said, they were both uh, both uh, charged with uh, the criminal mischief in the third degree, aggravated harassment. Uh, that qualify as uh, hate crimes, which bumps them up to the D felonies, as well as the uh, um, making of uh, graffiti. Um, we don't know uh, what the motive is uh, at this time. The matter is uh, still under investigation. Um, as the uh, district attorney said, there was a virtual uh, arraignment and they were both released. They are due back in Bronxville court uh, sometime in uh, July. Uh, I have to thank, I have uh, Sergeant Brian Bosan with me. He is the sergeant in the General Investigations Unit. I have to thank him uh, and his detectives and the Bronxville Police Department for working so closely together on this uh, and bringing it to a, to a quick uh, bit of closure. And uh, then we will see, let this go through the process. As the district attorney said, uh, they will prosecute this to the fullest extent. Thank you. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Tejas Sinchala. I'm the Executive Director of the Westchester County Human Rights Commission. In the wake of coronavirus, there have been many acts of hate across the country. Westchester County is not immune. In Westchester, there is no room for hate, including racism against African American, Hispanic, and the Asian American communities, anti-Semitism, and Islamophobia. The Commission denounces all acts of hatred. We are grateful that law enforcement acted swiftly in this case. Historically, hate incidents have been underreported. I call upon the community to report any instances of hate to the Human Rights Commission. A recent op-ed resonated with me, and I'm going to quote part of it. You can't stand up for some and not stand up for others. And like the coronavirus, unchecked aggression has the potential to spread wildly. Please don't minimize hate or assume it's somewhere far away. It is happening close to you. If you see it on the street, say something. If you, see it, if you hear it at work, say something. If you sense it in your family, say something. Stand up for your fellow Americans. I strongly encourage everyone to report any instances of hate that they see to the Westchester County Human Rights Commission either by telephone at 914-995-7710 or by email, humanrights at westchestergov.com. Thank you. Stay right there, Chief. Uh, we're going to open up for this portion. Any questions from the press, you can direct it to any of these individuals. We're happy to answer it. And then when I move on to do my update, we'll let them uh, be able to move on about their day. Any questions for the district attorney, for Chief Inspector, for Sergeant Bosan, or for um, uh, Tejalis and Chala? Any questions on the incident? All good? Gentlemen, thank you for your hard work. I'll give you a handshake, but I can't do that in this era, so we'll do this. I'll give my best. Uh, thanks, sir. Appreciate it all. Gentlemen, thank you. And we want to reinforce our thanks for the county police, along with uh, the Bronxville police that uh, have uh, identified individuals that they think may, may have committed these crimes. They are innocent until proven guilty. That is the purpose of a prosecutorial function and then also a judicial function, which is yet to play out. But uh, before I go on to do the, uh, the work that I came here to do, I just want to mention that, you know, I've talked many times about my uh, ethnic background as Italian and uh, Irish American. And uh, I've heard stories from my grandparents and great-grandparents' generations about how the Irish and the Italians in different eras were treated with disrespect and uh, terrible comments uh, about uh, our, our background. So it is a hateful process that continues to the current day. It's directed at different people who are others. Once where it was Italian or Irish or Jewish today and to those who are immigrants, those are African-American, it was wrong then, it's wrong now, and Westchester State stands up to defend all of our residents and regardless of their ethnic background. People must be treated as individuals and they must be respected and then dealt with as the individuals they are, not by uh, dint of any um, demographic. 
With that having been said, uh, I want to give a brief update on some of the issues that relate to the coronavirus update, and we'll take questions and on this beautiful day uh, have everybody be about their way. The statistics that we just received today show that we, we have currently 1,575 active cases of coronavirus. That is down from the prior number yesterday of 1,665. We continue a seven-week decline in the number of active cases. The total number of positives rose a very small amount to 33. 3,186. Um, but again, uh, the vast majority of those individuals, 31 plus thousand of them, have uh, cleared the incubation period of two weeks. So the number of active cases is 1,575. We have under 400 individuals that are hospitalized currently for COVID. The most recent numbers we have are two days ago, 319 patients. We believe most likely that we're below the 300 mark but at this point, that's a major drop from where we were seven weeks ago at its peak when we were 1,200. We have lost uh, 1,352 individuals to COVID. Uh, there were seven deaths overnight from last night. Uh, that is uh, similar to what we've seen now in the last two plus weeks where we've had single digit situations, much, much better than having 40 and 50 deaths as we had seven weeks ago, but every death is a tragedy. And that is why we've established our Ribbons of Remembrance program down at Lenoir Preserve in Yonkers. Uh, any individual can go down there during the daylight hours and uh, take a ribbon and uh, make a notation about a loved one they lost to COVID and place it on one of the trees that are there so that we will have a way to remember those individuals that they once lived, they once were loved, and uh, are still part of our heart for all of those who passed away. Our total testing amount uh, for COVID has reached 145,385 people tested. That's 14 and a half percent of all the residents of Westchester County, a significant number, and we're very pleased to do that. Our contact tracing program is underway. Uh, we've had a goal uh, of over 800 individuals. We have to train them. It's a five hour uh, online course. Those individuals are now uh, undertaking their tasks. We have representatives from all branches of county government that have been involved, the district attorney's office, local municipalities, the county clerk, the board of legislators, and uh, all of those in your individuals and what they're doing is critical for the reopening that we experienced of the region yesterday, which is now underway. We want to have a special thanks to Karen Pecora, who is the head of CSEA for the county uh, unit local, and uh, we're very appreciative of her work and her team's work in identifying some individuals who can provide this necessary task as part of this. We'll be announcing before the end of the week a reopening task force individuals from a variety of different disciplines that together will help us chart our way as a county through the reopening period. This is only phase one. We have phase two, three, and four still ahead of us. We hope to go through them smoothly along with our Hudson Valley neighbors. Right now into phase one, we've reopened construction projects, manufacturing, wholesale supply chain, and then retail for curbside purposes and uh, drop off an in-store pickup. And to the extent that there is any of this in Westchester, agriculture, forestry, and fishing. And uh, with those uh, efforts going on, we hope to see us moving in the right direction. Behind me here on Court Street, the City of White Plains has set aside an area that now has reopened today and will be every Wednesday for farmer's market. And some of that agriculture that we see in some of the local farms of Westchester, Putnam, and the Hudson Valley, and next door in Connecticut will be available for purchase here. And if we have another beautiful day like this today, and you're in White Plains in the heart of the day, please come down and be part of this farmer's market. There are other farmer markets that are opening. They're opening with us where Wearing, uh, face masks and with us socially distancing, but they are opening and we have that uh, slow but steady uh, re-emphasizing of business as it exists. Uh, we'll have some announcements later this week on our parks. You know that we opened our beaches, uh, two of our beaches this past weekend. Uh, we were able to manage the smaller demand. If the weather stays nice, we'll have a higher demand uh, and we'll talk about what the long-term picture is for Playland Amusement Park, for uh, the Croton Gorge, which we did close last weekend because of the problems we had with the volume of individuals and a host of other different things that uh, we have to deal with. So uh, without much further dialogue, I'll open it up for any questions that you may have. Happy to answer them if there are any. Uh, we have a question. We're good. Anything online? If anyone uh, from the media that may be watching wishes to uh, follow up with this, you can reach us through Catherine Chaffee, our Director of Communications. Uh, we'll be happy to do that. Later this week, uh, we'll uh, to give our update in the city of New Rochelle with Mayor Noam Bramson. And uh, tomorrow, uh, we'll have an update as well for you. We'll give you hard facts and uh, try to give you some announcements of some policies as we make them. Thanks very much for watching. Have a safe day and be safe.